Hello guys, how's it going and welcome back to Tech It With Myself, Lewis, I hope you're all brilliantly well. And in this episode we're going to go ahead and finally move our quarry. You can see down here I've taken it all out, it's all been moved, filled in the gap, so we're looking pretty good. Chest has turned around for some unknown reason, which is uh, always nice. And this guy is just sat in here kind of chilling at the minute. So we're going to go ahead and move him and uh, create a very large quarry because I need some resources. You know, we need tons of resources to kind of get ourselves into the maximum stages of creating all the items that we need. And we're also going to look into a way of rapidly transporting all of the quarried items as well, which is going to be pretty cool. You know, I'm looking quite forward to making these. We're also going to go ahead and make some lighting for inside here because I'm tired of all these little lamps everywhere. It just looks rubbish. Now, in previous episodes, I did go ahead and say that we're going to use some inverted lamps, but I've kind of decided against this. We're going to go ahead instead and make some raft lamps. Now these guys are really cool. They're all to do with factorization and they basically light up a massive, massive area. And to do this, firstly, we're gonna need a piston just like this, one simple piston. We're gonna need ourselves a chest like this. And we're also gonna need some iron and some cobblestone, which we've already got, so we're looking pretty good. So let's put our piston like this, our crafting table, some iron along the sides like this and fill the rest in with cobble. And this guy is gonna give us a craft packet stamper. If you guys don't know what a craft packet stamper is, it's all to do with factorization. Basically, you can make craft packets, basically put them in here and it will stamp them and give you the item. The craft packets can basically be a recipe of your choice. If you uh, don't know about it, then go watch my Feed the Bee series because I did cover it quite a bit on there. Now, now that we've got this guide, we need to go ahead and make a recipe to make ourselves some diamond shards. And to do this, firstly, we need diamonds. We also need some obsidian, which I have a little bit in here, kind of chilling out, you know, pretty nice. And we're also going to need ourselves some TNT. Oh, yeah. So we need some gunpowder, which I have somewhere around here. Yeah, and some sand. Cool. And let's go ahead and make a load of these guys. So I'm going to take my Electrum and my Cobble out. And we'll put these guys in here and just get this uh, one on the roll. So we need these guys like this. And our sand. Very basic. Cool. And we need four of these guys. Nice. Looking good. Now for the rest of this recipe, we need a diamond block. So let's go ahead and craft one of these first. And uh, God, we're running out of diamonds rapidly. There we go, one diamond block, looking pretty good. And we've got obsidian, so I think we're pretty much on the roll of being able to do this. So the guy looks like this, with some TNT like this, and the obsidian. Giving us one really nice craft packet, just like this. Now this craft packet is the only craft packet that you can make with solely items like this. Generally they'll need to be made in a craft packet maker, but this is a special one. If we put this guy in here, you're going to see he's going to make 18 diamond shards. Factorization for the win. And with these shards, we can go ahead and combine them with some obsidian. Other way around. There we go. Oh, maybe it needs to be done in a uh, crafting table. Why do you not want to work? Let's double check. We need a Raf Igniter. There we go. Ah, Never Brick. That would be why. So we have some Never Brick. Not a problem. And we'll go ahead and craft this guy. So Diamond Shards. Giving us one Raf Igniter. Cool. Now Raf Igniters are extremely dangerous. So be careful with these guys. You know, if you click the ground with these in any kind of forested area, the whole place is going to go up quickly as well. You can also use these to click on things like cobblestone and sand and it will kind of transmute them into other objects as well. You make glass, you can obviously make the regular cobblestone and whatnot. But the main thing we want to do with this guy is we want to make some dark iron ingots. And to do this we're going to need some iron blocks. So let's go ahead and make some iron blocks first. Mm, we use we don't really need six to be honest, we only really need four. We we'll probably even need less than that. But at least we can go and turn them back if we don't need them in a later time. So we're going to go ahead and just throw these guys like this. And be very careful when using this. That's going to go ahead and light the blocks. You know, you can actually go ahead and burn iron with this guy. Really cool. And make sure you stand well back because it will set you alight if you kind of get a little bit too close to it. Which is definitely not what we want. Now if you just leave it, this guy is going to slowly burn these blocks and make these dark ones you can see here, which are dark iron. After a minute as well, they will catch a light, so just be ready to kind of put out the blaze. There we go. Cool. And we're left with these guys. If we mine them up, we get some block of dark iron. Cool. Let's grab all of these. 
nice. And throw these in here, giving us dark iron ingots. 16 of the bad boys, liking it. And with this, we can go ahead and make a raft lab. So to do this, we need some silver, which I probably have some silver in here. Yeah, of course I do. And we need some glass panes. Nice, we got glass panes as well. So to do this, we put our glass panes like this, just like this, looking pretty good. And we need a raft igniter, which is gonna sit in the middle. Cool. And every time you use the Raff Igniter, you can see the damage bar on it. I think there's something like eight uses out of it. So it's quite expensive because you need the diamond shards to do it. But it is one really cool thing. And we need our dark iron like this and our silver giving us some raft lamps looking pretty nice now I want to go ahead and craft a few of these so I'm gonna put this guy in here this guy right in here we'll put our glass panes back in here as well and just see how many of these we can get out of it so we've got one two three and really we want one more so I'm just gonna go put these bits back in here and I think we need a little bit more of the silvers yeah where is my silver gone I'm sure we have some more silver yeah cool. And we just put these like this, making one more of these guys. Cool beans. So these are going to illuminate the arrow really well. I'm thinking of kind of space right here, so we'll probably go one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we'll go around and do it this way. All right, guys, I'm going to go place all these and clear up all my torches, and we'll be right back. Cool, looking pretty bright in it. No more torches, which is why I love, because I've had more than enough hassle with all these torches everywhere, just blocking the place up. It's nice to see no torches. And everything is looking fine and dandy. There's been no spawns in it so far, fingers crossed, and everything's looking pretty light. So I'm loving these guys right at the minute. So now we're gonna move on and actually start being able to transport our quarry over to a new area and get a bit of uh, power going to it and getting some items on the go. And to do this, we're gonna make a Tesseract. We're actually gonna go ahead and make a couple of Tesseracts. If you look in here, I've got a load of stored up Ender. So we're looking pretty good with our uh, liquid Ender. And this guy's needed to make the Tesseracts. So to make a Tesseract frame, which you need to be able to make before you can fill it with anything, uh, we're going to need a few bits and bobs. So we're going to need some diamonds in here. I'm just going to take this guy out of here. We need some diamonds, which, and we're going to make two of these guys as well. We need some hardened glass, which is going to throw like this. And we need ourselves some tin. And I'm pretty sure I have tin somewhere in here. You know, I've always got tin kind of hiding around somewhere. Or it might just be in here. Yeah, there it is. Cool. And we'll put our tin like this. Pow, giving us some tesseract frames nice everything else can kind of go back in here and just chill for a little bit with these frames you want to go ahead and combine them with our uh, liquid ender by throwing them in here cool and he's going to go ahead and do this uh, it uses something like 1800 1600 of your liquid ender of the uh, mb so it's quite a bit you know so just be wary of that in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and make the items that we needed to actually turn this guy into an item tesseract. If I show you here on NEI, you can see there's multiple different types. You have energy, liquid, and item tesseracts. Once this guy is filled up, we're going to be given an unattuned tesseract. If we check the recipes out, we have redstone conduits, lead, silver, and electrum. And each one is basically the same type of thing, just using different ores. We have pneumatic servos on these guys, though. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and make a few pneumatic servos, which we're going to need for this one. And to do this, we need redstone, iron, and glass so we've got a redstone which we're just going to pop here we have some iron kind of chilling out and we have a glass nice and we're just gonna make two of these guys cool and let's just see how our uh, things are doing nice we got two cool so let's go ahead and get all these bits and bobs together so the recipe to turn these guys into item tesseracts is your uh, tesseracts in the middle like this your servo is going to go down here like so and we need ourselves some silver and tin. So where is all my stuff? Cool, we got some silver. We probably might need a little bit more though. I think this could be it. I don't know, we'll find out. And we have our tin like this. Cool, giving us some un some item tesseracts. Cool, we got two of those. Now with this guy, I'm gonna just plop one of them. Hmm, where should we put it? Just put him here, cool. And we're gonna go ahead and make a chest so that we can get this guy up and run it. So I'm just gonna make a regular chest and we're just gonna keep upgrading it all the way until we have like one of the best chests. Uh, we've got iron. Uh, no, that's a crafting table. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> one of those days. Cool, all right. Now we have a chest. Get him into an iron chest so he can store a little bit more. And then we're going to turn him into a gold chest so he can store lots more. And then we're going to make a diamond chest like a boss. If we had more diamonds, that is. Oh, we haven't got any more diamonds. Hmm. 
Okay, that's not a problem. We can make some diamonds. Cool, nice and easy. I love the minimum stone, which makes life really easy. And we're gonna put these guys like this with some glass. Yeah, giving us some of these guys a diamond chest, nice. And you know, just because we're snazzy, we're gonna go ahead and make the last one because we're a boss and we're gonna make a crystal chest. Love this guy, literally shows all the items in there and just looks really cool, nice. Pow, look, a oh, little block of iron living in there, cool. So let's connect these guys together. Just use some red, some regular cobblestone transport pipes. And note when I put it down, it doesn't connect to the Tesseract. Now the reason it doesn't connect to the Tesseract is because the Tesseract at the minute is device inactive, you can see here. It needs to be given a frequency. So we're going to go ahead and just give it frequency 1. And it's going to be known as Item Tesseract. Cool. There we go. Nice and easy. Once you first use the Tesseract, you'll find that this one will be free. You'll actually need to go and ride it all in yourself. I was playing with Tesseracts earlier, so I've already got these guys in here. But we could go and change it to whatever we like. You know, we should call it item or whatnot. Easy. And once this guy has been given a name and a frequency, you're going to see that it connects up to this guy. Looking pretty cool. And once they're connected, it can then be used. Obviously, bear in mind with the other Tesseract that we have, we are also going to have to connect it to frequency 1 if we want it to be able to connect like that. There are some other cool features of these as well. Well, if we go in here you can look at the configuration tab we can actually change the public access and we can also change it between send and receive so this guy here is going to be receiving only because he's going to be receiving the items we can also change the redstone current and whatnot as well so at the minute it doesn't need a signal but we could change that if we wanted to change it so next up on the agenda is to get our quarry up and going so i'm going to make myself some uh, lapis where are you there you are Cool. Get free of these landmarks. And I'm probably going to want one more, I think, as well. So let's grab another one of these. Nice. Cool. And what else are we going to need? I want some switches. Because we need some switches so we can set this big boy up. Nice. Free levers. Even. Cool. Alright you guys, I'm going to go have a little sleep so it's nice and daylight outside. And I'm going to find a really cool place to put all of this down. I'll be right back cool so i'm thinking this is where we're going to put the quarry i've laid this very nice kind of area out here of the landmarks it's not the biggest it could be but it's a nice size to kind of get some quarry on the go nice and quick now i think the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is probably we're going to power on some redstone energy conduits but i do want to set him up so that we can at least start getting some stuff out of him into our tesseracts so we're just going to fill these guys along here like this and bring it down one more <clears throat> and put our tesseract into here nice Cool. Now if we go in and set him as item like this, accept, and you're going to see that he's now connected. So this guy here is now pretty much good to go. You know, he can uh, use all his good stuff and suck in all the bits and bobs. And hopefully, fingers crossed, he's going to send all the items off to our base. I'm not too sure whether he's going to need to be chunk loaded or not, but I think we should be good because this guy chunk loads as it is anyway. So it should be fine. Now let's go ahead and power this guy. Now I want to try and see if I can do it with my redstone energy conduit first, just to kind of get it going. So let's try this, shall we? There we go. And we want the energy coming out of here like this. Now, yeah, there we go. You can see this guy running. He's going to get rid of all the trees quite nicely. And I think the best thing for us to do is probably just let him use up as much of this as possible. Um, the output on this probably could be ramped up a little bit, but I don't want to go giving it too much, you know. Let's just see how he does like this. So I'm going to be back in two seconds, and we're just going to wait for him to get really built in, and I'll be right back. Alrighty guys, so we're back, and look at it, it's up and running. Oh yeah, one big ass quarry doing its thing, loving it. Unfortunately, our uh, redstone energy cell did pretty much give up the go though, halfway through actually destroying the block before it even started building the construction area around it, but you know, that is fine. It was only like 10% charge, these guys can hold tons. And if we look over here, you can see that our Tesseract is working. All the items are coming straight out of here, going into the Tesseract, and we'll go back in a second to check to make sure it's all going over there. Hopefully it's still all loaded and working perfectly fine. I think the next episode is purely going to be on power. You know, we need a lot of power to get this thing going really quick. At the minute, it's pretty slow. You know, it'll do for the time being, but it's kind of pumping out all right, but we could do with a lot more items. You can see our regular electric engine isn't even got a tick in it. Like, it's not even barely holding. And our battery box is caning away. As soon as it gets to nighttime, unfortunately, these guys are going to pack up and it's just going to stop. 
with a quarry this size, really you want some serious power going for it so you can get this guy running at full speed, make your way through all the main layers and get down, because it's going to take ages before we can even get to cobblestone really. <laughs> but you know, once it's done, it's done and uh, it'll be good times. So let's go back and check and see if our other uh, Tesseract is working. Check that out guys, Tesseract number two, bringing the goods. Oh yeah, it's working perfectly fine. We're getting all of our uh, dirt and our spruce wood and our saplings all coming through this guy. We've still got our iron block from earlier that we was playing with. But you can see all the items coming through here magically as if it's coming from nowhere. But yeah, it's coming from our quarry, so he's doing a great job. So like I say in the next episode, you can actually kind of see it from here. Nice. Yeah, in the next episode, we're going to work on storing some serious power. I think that's the next thing. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. We have some serious power on the go. We're going to move away from these coal generators, which have run out as well. Good times. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think we're going to look at uh, magmatic engines. I probably think that's probably the best thing to do. You know, we're going to get some uh, thermal bits and bobs going and uh, get some lava generation. Sounds good to me. Loving these lamps as well. Alright guys, I'll see you soon for another episode. Have a good one and goodbye.